Are you a little overwhelmed with vacuum chamber and all of those valves? Well, follow these rules and everything will work out just fine. Hey everyone, my name is Derek and I am the owner, creator, and head silicone slinger here at Amaviti where we make silicone toys for adults. Now we should start off with the ground rule that a vacuum chamber is critical for making toys that are safe. Without it, our silicone will be full of bubbles and almost like a sponge, and each one of those bubbles is a place for the wee beasties to grow and thrive. And that is a bad thing. So here's the process. First, make sure that all of your fittings are tight. Start at the vacuum pump and work your way all the way back to the fresh air valve. As you go, make sure that all of your valves are closed as well. This is the vacuum side with the hose attached to it, and this is the fresh air side. This valve is open and this valve is closed. Also, check and make sure that your gasket isn't torn or damaged in any way. Now the first rule of the vacuum chamber, and this is critical, is that the vacuum valve should always be closed unless the vacuum pump is on and pulling air. And as a corollary, always close your vacuum valve before you turn off the vacuum pump. And if you follow these rules, you should be just fine. Once your silicone is thoroughly mixed, drop it in the vacuum chamber and double check to make sure that your cups are at least two to three times the size of the silicone itself. As the air is pulled out of the silicone, it'll double in size and you don't want it overflowing the cup and making a mess everywhere. Silicone is too expensive and there's no reason to waste it. And also, never put a cup directly under the fittings in the lid. If you do, then the air rushing into the chamber as we release the vacuum can blow your silicone all over the place. Again, silicone is too expensive to waste. Now make sure that your lid is centered and seated directly on the chamber and make sure that both of your valves are closed. Now you can turn on the vacuum pump and open the valve on the vacuum side. Now you should see the vacuum gauge rise. If it doesn't start to rise or if it stops before pulling a full vacuum, then check and make sure that your fresh air valve is completely closed or that you don't have any leaks along the chain. What we want to see is the silicone rise and then collapse. Once the silicone stops bubbling, then you can close the vacuum valve and then, and only then, turn off the vacuum pump. Now you can slowly, slowly open the fresh air valve and let air back into the chamber. And once the pressure equalizes, then you can take the lid off and continue on with the pour. And now, a couple of warnings. If you ever turn off the vacuum pump without closing the vacuum valve, then the pressure differential can pull the oil directly out of the pump and into your vacuum chamber. And that will probably contaminate all of your silicone. Also, it is critical that your lid is centered and seated properly on your vacuum chamber. If it isn't, this can create a dangerous situation where your lid collapses and either breaks or shatters. And finally, a pro tip. If you misjudge the size of your cups and it looks like the silicone is going to overflow, you can throttle the vacuum. Just open the fresh air valve slightly and you'll reduce the vacuum a little bit. Just keep doing that until the silicone settles down a bit and then you can pull a full vacuum. But why do we use a vacuum chamber instead of a pressure pot? Well, I have a video about that and you should check it out. And with that, I am out and I will see you in the next video.